Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Fish in This Therapy. Time to get that therapy, boy. But I'm up early in the morning, guys. As you know, we're in the dog days of summer still. But I'm, I want to give you guys a, uh, just a modification video, okay, to show you the mods I made. There weren't too many because this kayak, the Pelican Catch Mode 110, comes fully equipped, okay? But there's a few mods I added to it, things to make life on the water easier, and I think you guys will find that useful. So let's go ahead and jump in without further ado. But before I put everything on the kayak so you can see how it's fully modded out, I'm going to show you one detail that's very important that I took a lot of time this week, okay? It took me about three days to be able to do, and I think you guys will find it useful as well. It's a, a keel guard, okay? So I'm going to show you what I did, and I did the full length of the Pelican Catch, one, catch Mode 110, okay? So without further ado, let's jump right in and have a look. Come on. So I have two different uh, keel guards I put on here right now. You can see I changed it up for a reason. Um, the first one right here in the front on, the, on my kayak, this is the, uh, I haven't even taken the kayak out yet, guys. Look, I just drug it around just a little bit to see how this works. This is the gator guard patch. Okay, this is the largest patch they have. It's a nine inch by 12 inch. So 12 inches long, nine inches wide. This is about four inches here all the way to about six here, okay? So I took that just for this kill guard, and that's all I had was a nine and a half inch patch, and I took a two inch right here, two inch by uh, 12, so two inches in width by 12, put it right there on each side, all right? And I was kind of like, uh, I'm not sure about that, all right? Um, all of this here, so what you do with the kayak, all right, to be able to know where you want to put the kill guard is, all you have to do is drag it, okay? So I drug my kayak on the floor. I drug it on the driveway out there, okay? And I saw that it had a lot of drag marks here, just moving it around. The main drag marks are gonna come here as well as on the keel, right? So I said, Len, what, what's a better option? Do I go buy another one of these keel patches here and try to put it right here in the middle? Nine by 12, how much does that cost, right? So I'm thinking and I'm thinking, guys, and I'm like, man, it's about $70, $70, okay, just to get another one of these patches. There has to be a cheaper option. So I started looking around the internet. Thankful we have uh, some really good guys on the internet, and I, I saw the Kydex patch. First, I was like, man, I saw this a lot. People putting tape, people gluing it. They're putting Gorilla Tape and all these different things, and it just didn't look efficient. When I saw the Kydex one, I thought, that's a good one. So I bought the packs off Amazon, got uh, the Kydex, and I used uh, Gorilla Mountain Tape, okay? And uh, I'll show you right here. I used two different types of tape. I used the 3M right here, all right? That was pretty good. I'll leave the link in the description for you, but it's a 3M uh, VHB tape. And then I got the 60-pound Gorilla Mountain Tape. And I got a, a four pack from Amazon of a 0.80 thickness Kydex sheets, okay? They're 12 by 12 sheets. And I went ahead and I went to work, guys. So all I did was I molded it on, okay? I cut it out just with some shears some, and some tin snips. Cut it out to the size that I wanted, made it go all the way down. And then I used the heat gun to mold the Kydex. When you mold Kydex, it gets really malleable. And I molded it over to the size of the gunwale, to, to the size of the uh, bottom, the way I would like it. Let it sit there to it cooled off. I had to hold it, had to use some gloves or hot hands, held that down. And then after it was molded, I took the Gorilla Mountain Tape. I like the way this tape mounts better than this tape. This tape right here is a pain to get off of the roll. Once you stick this on there, this red is, is just really hard to get off and it's thinner than the thickness of this tape here, okay? I like it, it sticks right away, much easier than this one, and it's easier to work with. I ended up using four of these. I bought one just to do this one here, and I got about one and I got about one, two and a half done. So I ordered three more. And I said, man, what the heck? Let's just go all the way through. So I used exactly four sheets, guys. I probably have about an inch or two left. So that's four Kydex sheets. Look at that. I think it was done well, and I used marine silicone, just this uh, simple star bright one, to seal all the way under here. So once I laid it on, I put this thing, I saw little edges that were still a little sticky here. When I did that, I said, okay, 
Let's go ahead and seal it. But before I did that, I used a heat gun at a distance. All right, because I don't want to melt my kayak. At a distance, got it just warm enough, and I pressed all those edges down. When I got all those edges down, then I went around again with the marine silicone. And then I came back the next day, looked for any edges that had lifted up while it was, um, you can look at that really close. I looked for any edges that had lifted and I did the process again. So I'm really proud of this. I wanna see how it works out. I'll let you guys know. I'm gonna do a maiden voyage on Saturday and on the lake, on the pond, and I'm gonna show you how it, uh, everything works as far as the kayaks handling, stability, and the overall mods that I chose. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you the other mods that I want to do on this kayak, that I have done on this kayak, that are very simple, you can do, they make life easier on the water, okay? I'm all about making life easier so I can have more of a therapeutic outdoor experience. So let me go ahead and show you what I put on this kayak. So we're going to start from the rear to the front, okay? So the first thing I thought was important to do, because I'm car topping mine, okay? I'm putting my kayak here on the top of my roof rack, 67 pound kayak. I thought it'd be important, so this skeg here, okay? The skeg is a really, really good feature, okay, to have on a kayak. And the thing I wanna do is I uh, put bungee, bungee cord right here, okay? And it was the same bungee that I used here on my kayak crate. I just took that, made a knot, burned the end, put a pad eye, nylon pad eye, another nylon with stainless steel screws, and I just pulled it across so it's very easy, see? So when I'm driving down the road, cause it's like this, it's just here. So I knew if I was driving it blue, you know, it would, it can easily blow over, you know, bumping and it's just hitting against the roof of my uh, vehicle. So I didn't want that. I wanted a way to secure it when it's up because I saw on like the HD version, a few others that they already had uh, something like this. So I decided to go ahead. I already had some nylon um, pad eye. So I said, why not go ahead and do that? I think that's a really good feature to have. I have my kayak crate equipped with the Atwood light right here. So if I'm going out at night or early morning, kayak crate, um, I just put a kayak rod holder, I mean a rod holder on the back, the three prong one. So I can put my rods back here if I so choose. And you open it this way, you can lock it here. So when I get on the water, I usually just move this back here. And that's all I need to do. Put my things inside of here, whatever I may need, whether it be a cooler, whether it be plain old tackle boxes, however that looks. One feature I think I'm gonna be using a lot more than these actually is something that I like right here. You can use this for a paddle holder, but since I have another feature for my paddle holder, I'm gonna be putting my fishing rods here. Oftentimes when you put them right here, they're up, and when you make a cast, it gets in your way. Sometimes you actually knock your rods. I lost a rod this way by casting out and my hook went around the rod and pulled it right out of the rod holder. So I think I'm just gonna lay them down because this kayak is equipped with that, okay? And you get the uh, rod tip savers right here. So I'm using that uh, right there as a rod holder. You can use it as a paddle holder as well. Then I'm uh, the kayak seat. For my seat, I'm just gonna put my plain old tackle boxes here, the ones that I'm using immediately. So if there's, you know, two or three, they'll be back in here. And then the one I wanna store right here, I can just reach around my seat, reach around the side or through the top, and you can just pull you're playing on tackle box out like that, okay? And on the seat, I went ahead and added some forceps. Most people just use pliers. I like forceps because they lock down really easy, and all you have to do is clamp them down on the hook and just pull it out, okay? And these are really long. Of course, I don't like to lose anything, so I put the uh, bungee cord with the uh, carabiner clip right here. And I love this about the kayak handle because they have the little holes here where on my previous kayak, I had to hook it around here. I was gonna have to buy bigger carabiner clips for here, but I actually don't because uh, this clip is so convenient and this loop right here, the little details matter a lot, guys, especially to me. Um, so then we're gonna go right here. I'm gonna use the rod holder. I took this rod holder um, off of my um, Lifetime Tamarack kayak. It was a rail blazer, see? Railblazer. Well, I, ha I bought Railblazer rod holders. I bought one and I bought two on the other side, okay? And the reason why I did that is I knew I wanted a rod holder on my right side, which is what I primarily use. I don't need one on both sides, okay? So this is going to be my rod holder when I'm going out. And usually when I launch, this is how it's going to be. I have rods laying down on the side, maybe one in the back or two if I need to. Depends on the day, the multi-species fishing and I'll have one right here. 
And remember, when you go ahead and take this rod off here, you can go ahead and set it right here to store it. All right, and I really like that extra rod holder right there because it's three on this kayak, right? And so now we go around to the front. One of the things I thought was very important to have is a stand-up assist strap. I saw this on higher-end kayak, stand-up assist strap. So I went ahead and just tied some black rope from my anchor already. I had an anchor. I just took about 10 feet of rope off, and I went ahead and tied knots there. And I bought, um, um, these are the workout straps. And of course, guys, I'll have everything linked down in the description. These are like the workout straps that you use when you're um, pulling the cables in the gym. I liked it because it matched orange and black with the kayak. It's foam. Um, it doesn't get hot, doesn't absorb heat. And I think it's really nice. I think it looks really neat. And that's all I did was tie that rope off there. It came with the hooks and everything already. That's all you have to do. Uh, let's see what the company was. Uh, Spigen uh, Sport, okay? I'll have that length in there as well. I like that. I have it just where I need it and about right there for me. I'm six foot two and I can reach out to this, and then I can go ahead and tuck it underneath when I'm not using it. I have the, uh, I've grown fond of the, of the Kimimoto kayak paddle holders, okay? And I explained in a previous video that you can use only one. Okay, you can store your kayak paddle holder under here, but I found that when you do that, when you have it off there, it's leaning off to the side. So you won't be able to utilize the bungee cable right here. You can, you can, but the direction that I have my cup here, this is the cup holder, we'll get to this. I thought that it would be better so I can just put it right here because these are swivel. You can move this um, paddle holder around. I love the Kimimoto kayak paddle holder, so I only put one on here. Now, one of the things I want, I want it is uh, when I'm on a kayak, I'm going back to using the head mount. Because when you're looking off to the left, you're looking off to the right and things like that, when a kayak um, paddle holder, when a kayak, um, when your GoPro is on your chest, you can't look off to the right or left. I don't like that angle. Uh, just me personally, maybe a personal preference, maybe you guys don't even care. But I went ahead and used the um, kayak rod holder here, and I went ahead and I already had a rail blazer. This is a rail, rail blazer uh, telescopic pole with swivels, and you can put your GoPro on there. So now I can move angles off to the side, all the way to the front and that easily secures on there and it comes out really easy and slows out of my way. Um, I have a 10 amp hour battery pack in here, so I don't have to worry about, I can keep this rolling all day long, okay? There we go, 10 amp battery, I charge that before I go out. And I use this uh, like, kind of like wax putty that you use, this prevents uh, water from entering your device. So when I plug it in, I push this right up to it and it helps it become more waterproof, okay? So I really like that. And on this end, if you actually notice, you're like, what is that clip going to? This clip is what, this is the way I'm gonna travel with it. This is my brush gripper. I use this, especially at Yona Dam or at local ponds to grip onto things. See? And you pull that and you grip, I'm not gonna put it on my seat right now, um, but you're gonna, you go ahead and grip onto brush, grip onto the wall. I use this a lot at Yona Dam and Swift Water. And when I'm done with it, I just throw it behind these awesome seats, the ergo seat right there, it's storage. That's really good as well. And of course, look at that clip again. Look how it's coming in handy. And I just had a carabiner clip tied off with paracord, straight to the brush gripper, and I can have it right there. And if I want to take my chair out, take it off, lift the chair out. Very, very easy, very, very simple. I think simple is always best. And this is my um, water holder, this is an insulated, a water holder, look how big it is, guys. <laughs> I mean, this thing is pretty tall and it fits in here really nice and snug and I can ride around and have water all day. So I'm gonna be putting Plano boxes here. This is my uh, Placino kayak. Um, this is my, sorry, th this is my Placino uh, fishing net right here, okay, for my kayak. I keep this one on here, it's foldable, but I usually have it around back since I cast over my right shoulder I keep it on my left side so that it minimizes the uh, hooks potentially getting tangled in the net and it pulling off. But the reason why I got this one is just in case that ever happens, this floats. So in here it's like a foam and this net floats. It won't sink. So I really like that. And now I've taken this off temporarily, but along my kayak crate, 
I have an anchor and I just usually tie my anchor back on here and then this is uh, adjustable. You can pull it, see? And you just tie it and drop your anchor off on the side and tie off. So I really like this kayak so far. And so depending on the day and how I'm fishing, guys, um, right here, I'll take off the mesh netting where you can stow your kayak paddle. I'll take this off and I'll take this cooler, like if I'm fishing like this weekend in the pond, I'll take off that and I'll set this cooler, which has rod holders on it, and I'll set it right here so I can throw all my brim and my bluegill and my bass, my shell crackers, whatever, smaller fish in here, okay? And then if I want to, I can take my bigger cooler, move this guy, because remember I have all that rod storage right there, and I'll remove this, put my Plano box in here, remove this, put a cooler, a bigger cooler back here, put my food and everything here, my drinks, and then I have all of this open space right here to work with, all right? Sometimes I just bring, I can bring my cooler right here in the front when I'm eating a snack, and I can store it right here. So it's so versatile. I really love this kayak, guys. I think you guys are gonna really like it too. So take a look at it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out in the maiden voyage this Saturday. This kayak has been really fun to mod and add things to because it's so versatile and I'm just glad it took a lot of guesswork out. And one of my favorite features is that it, I don't need to screw down. Sorry, I forgot one more thing. So I went to Academy and I always like to be legal. So I got a boat ruler and it fits just along the side, the gunwale, if you would say, kayak gunwale along the side, okay? And it's 36 inches, sorry, 37 inches. And I have that right there. So I'll be able to lean off to the side and measure my fish. Normally, if I'm bass fishing, they're not gonna get much bigger than this, okay? If they get up 37 inches, then hey, I just move this out of the way and I lean over and I measure it. And you don't have to lean outside of the kayak. So that ruler is only five bucks from Academy Sports. It's called the Boat Ruler. Guys, I really like this kayak. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to take her out on our maiden voyage. You know, and uh, everything in here is, you know, very convenient for me, you know? Like my water bottle, take my water bottle off. I want to switch it to this side, that's fine. Got my paddle holder, bam, pop it out like that. See, I want everything to be practical. So I literally sat in this kayak you know, for hours thinking about what are the most convenient mods and how do I actually fish every day. So that may be something you guys want to do. See, I can put that under there. Off to the side when I have fish. Look at all the platform. This is one of the main reasons why I have all this space right here for this kayak. Rod holder. And I like, some people say they don't like that it's too forward. I put it as far forward as I can because I like to lean and put this out of my way while I'm dealing with the fish. Or... I could just toss it like that, you know, and not have an issue. Either way, it's out of my way, okay? So I can have it right there when I'm out there paddling, trolling with that, swivel, and I can move my camera boom wherever I want it to give you guys an angle from outside of the boat, give you guys an angle from inside of the boat, a fish release, and I'll put my GoPro back on my head. I like everything, okay? And I can reach around like this. Normally, you'll have the rod in one hand fighting a fish, Bring your net around here, drop that net back. When you're done with it, throw it out, set the rod in there, have a drink, grab a plain old tackle box right here if you need to. Off to the side, bring out your stuff. And then if you need an extra rod, is that easy? You can bring that out. You wanna switch out rods, that's all you need to do. Switch out your rods. I want everything to be practical, simple. All right, guys. But I really appreciate you guys for staying tuned to another episode of Fishing This Therapy, guys. It's always really good for you guys to come out and check out my mods. I, I love making the videos, guys. But always leave a comment. I comment right back, okay? I see all your comments. It means a lot to me to interact with you guys. That's a big part of creating the channel. It's spreading the love for, for fishing and fishing being therapy to me. And I'm sure it's therapeutic to you as well, guys. So like, comment, subscribe. Any feedback you guys, give me any tips that you like. Any, any pluses or minuses, okay? I'm open to anything. Um, but guys, I really love it. Let's go ahead and get this video out there for anybody else who needs to uh, do anything similar like this. But see you guys on another episode of Fishing is Therapy. Get that therapy, boy. Peace.